Hi everyone and welcome back to Fun Facts with CVS Education Consulting. Today we're going to be talking about what to know before joining a charter school board or a nonprofit board. We're going to talk about what is the role of a board, how are board members selected, how do you know if board leadership is for you, and once you do decide it's for you, how do you elevate your interest? First, it's important to note that nonprofit and charter school board members are simply just skilled volunteers. They play a really important role, but at the end of the day, they're not paid employees of a school, um, even though they play that role. And so what are they responsible for? Well, they, said they set the strategic vision for their organizations. They set goals and evaluate progress towards them. The ED is accountable to them, and so ultimately they're responsible for supervising and evaluating the executive director. They manage the organizational budget and help to set it. They troubleshoot problems as they emerge, which include day-to-day -day and operational issues, but also um, as any family or constituent or staff issues emerge, the board is really the one responsible for addressing those in partnership with the school or nonprofit's leadership. They're liaisons to the public and champions of the work. Um, and in fact, with charter schools, the board is actually the one that is responsible for holding the charter. So ultimately, the one who manages the charter um, and is the liaison to whoever is holding them accountable. Um, and that means that they really take that role in particular of supervising the school leadership really seriously as they're deputizing that school leadership and carrying out the rest of the mission of the organization. And then finally, um, most board members play some role in fundraising. That looks really different depending on the individual organization. Some organizations will say in order to be a board member, there's an expectation that you give at a certain level per year. Um, some organizations will say there's what's called a give or get, which means that you either raise that amount of money or you give it directly. And then other organizations might say, well, we hope for 100% giving, even that if that's a dollar a year, we hope that all of our um, board members are investing in that way. Um, and other organizations may not elevate this um, component of the work, although um, personally, with the background in fundraising, I do think that board members should be playing an elevated and important role um, in fundraising on behalf of their organizations, even if that just means connecting their networks to the organizations. And so it's important to also note what boards are not tasked with. They're not responsible for making the programmatic decisions, the day-to-day -day decisions of how a school or nonprofit is supposed to be run. They don't implement the organization's programs. Um, they're not responsible for making decisions around staffing other than supervising the executive director. And they're certainly not expected to be experts in education or the field um, that they're serving in. So even if it's a nonprofit, for example, focused on housing, the expectation is not necessarily that every board member is an expert in housing. Instead, the expectation is that board members bring their own skill sets to the table um, that then help to support and align with the mission of the organization where the staff are really the experts in that area. And so how are board members chosen? You might be surprised to learn that board members are not elected into these positions, even for charter school boards. There are some um, variations or caveats to that um, with certain charter school models or certain nonprofit models. But in general, um, a nonprofit or charter school will have its bylaws that lay out all of the rules and expectations for board members and the way that the organization is run. And they'll individually decide how board members are chosen. Most of the time, it's through an application process um, and a combination of the executive director and the board themselves will work to make a decision about um, how to fill seats on the board. Oftentimes, boards are looking for specific skill sets. Many of them that you'll see often are um, attorneys and those with a legal background, 
parents or um, students or others that represent the, org the constituents of an organization, um, and also folks with fundraising um, or budgeting capacity. And so if you're considering taking on a board role, here are some of the questions that I think you should ask of um, the board itself or the organization. First, you're going to want to know what are the terms um, for officers, meaning are you expected to be um, on that board for a year, for two years, for three years? What's the flexibility in that? Um, and are they expecting you, if you come into a role, to play an officer role, meaning that you have a formal title and set of responsibilities? on the board or as a member at large, meaning that you have general responsibilities as a board member, but you're not leading a specific committee. Um, you'll also want to look at whether you have any financial conflicts of interest. While it's important to know about conflicts of interest broadly, um, the ones that our government is most interested in is any financial conflict. So will you or anyone in your immediate family or household benefit um, from the decisions that could be made? at that board table. Now, a lot of folks get worried about this, um, and I think as long as you're transparent um, and coming from you know, a good place, many times conflicts of interest can be mitigated simply through individuals recusing themselves from specific um, voting decisions, et cetera, on the board. But this is something to just keep in mind. Um, and so you'll also want to know just how has the organization been um, performing both programmatically and fiscally. And even if they've been underperforming, uh, I'm not suggesting that that means you shouldn't join the board. In fact, that might be the time when they need you the most. But you're going to have to think about whether or not you're prepared to enter that situation because rolling up your sleeves and doing the work really is an expectation of anyone in these roles. You're also want, going to want to know if your values are aligned with the organization, if you have the time to provide both for the direct work and any committee work that you will be doing. And then with any type of relationship, you're going to want to be thinking about, do I have specific skills that I want to bring to the table? How do I elevate those? And also, what am I specifically hoping to gain from this experience? In my own personal experience, being a board member has been one of the most impactful um, kind of forms of professional development that I've ever gone through. And I really encourage members to think of it in this way because you'll be learning alongside such wonderful, um, smart peers, but you'll also be tasked likely to do many things that are outside of your day-to-day -day responsibilities, even if you have an expertise in a particular area. Um, and so, you know, it's really an opportunity to flex your muscles, to learn some new things about the inner workings of an organization. And so um, how do you join a board? Well, to be honest, it oftentimes starts with um, elevating your interest to a board chair, board member, or executive staff member at that organization. I know this can sound a little bit scary or, you know, um, our imposter syndrome might sit, kick in to say, who am I to put in my, you know, candidacy for this role? But the reality is that boards are always looking to build their bench for, you know, prospective talent that can fill spots as they become available. And it's really important for them to have a pipeline and an understanding of who's in their trajectory um, so that as members shift, they can think about how to best fit you in or tell you, you know, right now I don't see this is going to be a fit, but have you thought about our peer organization here, et cetera, or would you like to volunteer in some other um, capacity that might be equally fulfilling to you? And so I hope you learned something new um, today about boards. And if you're interested in joining a board or um, if you are a nonprofit and you're looking for new board members, I'm always really happy to be a liaison across individuals, um, across organizations to help you um, to make the most of each other's networks. Because at the end of the day, um, board members play a really integral role in ensuring that organizations start strong, remain strong, and especially make it through any um, changes in leadership over time. Happy Friday!